I understand what you mean about doubling down on AMC. Makes sense to me. Hey, if you agree with it, have at it. If you don't, don't do it. Like, I'm not telling anyone to follow me. What you do with your money, that's your business. It's frankly not any of mine. Um, but there's so many people who exclusively because this is something that the company is doing. There's so many of these just like basically fucking sheep who are just following it. They're like, nope, AMC leadership team said it. So we have to be supportive of it. Look at what happens with people that had that same mindset with Ryan Cohen. These people followed Ryan Cohen, followed Ryan Cohen, followed Ryan Cohen. And then in Bed Bath & Beyond case, he led them to slaughter. If you are just a sheep continually following, 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 there's nothing that stops them potentially from leading you to slaughter. Both Ryan Cohen and Adam Aaron are put on a pedestal and everyone is acting as if they have your financial interests at heart. No, what they care about is the long-term viability of their company and long-term investors. They give a total of zero fucks about a squeeze. I want to be explicitly clear about this. Adam Aaron does not care about a short squeeze. He cares about retaining and improving the long-term potential of AMC as a company. In this particular scenario, he's doing that by raising capital through diluting Ape to use that money to pay off debt and merger and acquisitions. He's not doing this to prompt a squeeze. If a squeeze happens, he's fine with it. In real time, he would love for Ape to squeeze because then when he does a dilution, he could dilute it less and raise more money. So it would be beneficial for him if Ape were to squeeze right now. But he is not prompting a squeeze. Like he, That's not his goal. As a CEO, you care about the long-term viability of your business. It stops there. And there's too many people who basically fucking mindless zombie sheep are following around these suits. And if people have not learned their lesson from Ryan Cohen, if if everyone's argument is like, no, 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 the random guy I've never, ever met in my life has my back more than the other random guy that you thought had your back. That's a silly argument when it comes to life and not to get philosophical, but especially in the markets, the only one that has your back is you. Not a random fucking CEO, not some person on Twitter, not a person on YouTube, not a person on Reddit. It's you. Don't be a fucking sheep just following these people around and assuming, no, 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 they're going to do what's right for me. If you did not take that lesson away from Ryan Cohen rugging the entire Bed Bath & Beyond thing, I don't know what's going to teach you about it. Like that's a painful lesson that many people are still trying to figure out because they put way too much money into that stock. They thought Ryan Cohen had their back and he rugged it. He rugged it, he rugged it, he sold 100% as quickly as he could have. And if you're just not taking a lesson from that, the market is not a place for you then. Like if you're just, if you think the stock market, the options market, the futures market is a game where everyone's like holding hands and fucking singing Kumbaya and it's going to be great. Like it is not for you. It'll be a very, very painful experience. Wall Street is the most brutal cutthroat thing we currently have going and if you think this is just like fun and games and it's going to work and people aren't that mean and they're not there to screw over the next person, it's going to be a rough, rough time, a rough, rough time. I think we could all agree that maybe we're getting into a little bit of a tinfoil hat situation here. What would theoretically happen if everyone sold their ape and bought AMC? There would be such a liquidity squeeze that I think we would see some crazy shit. But you can't talk about it because it goes against whatever the fucking like crowd thinks that they want people to hear. They just, I don't get it. I mean, you guys, what do you think would happen? Feel free to comment it. Feel free to just call in. What is the thought process of what if everyone took their ape money and bought AMC? It would prompt a true liquidity squeeze. It really would. If all the apes, we know that retail owns like whatever amount. And honestly, in this scenario, we know that Vanguard and BlackRock aren't going to touch it. So mathematically, we can actually count them in it because we know they're not going to sell. Vanguard, BlackRock, these index funds aren't going to sell. So let's go back to the 90% that includes these index funds. That means that there's about 10% that's like actively traded. What if that 10%, what if those 50 million shares, 50, what, 1.7 million shares within a very quick period of time, let's say this week or next week, ended up in the hands of apes, people who are going to hold it. That's a liquidity squeeze. If we controlled all the shares that were actively being traded, I, I think we would see fireworks, but it's just like, I don't know if there would be enough of a group consensus to like pull that off. 
and there's too many people who already say like, I fucking love Ape and I'm not going to like do anything with it. Even though Ape literally just started trading today and they're acting as if like they like are somehow like indentured to it. I don't get it at all. I feel like that's another thing of the amount of people that say synthetic shares and then they don't know what a synthetic share is. It's kind of weird.